My name is Stephen Martin Welsh. I'm a painter and I base my career around portraiture. I enjoy the continual challenges that different characters bring to my work and they allow me a huge opportunity to vary my style. And no two sitters are ever the same. Today on The Sitting, I'm meeting a pair of New Zealand's finest acting talents. Uh, my first guest is Peter Elliott, one of New Zealand's most engaging and hard-working theatre and TV personalities. Also joining me is George Hanare, another multifaceted New Zealand actor of international renown. Now, I'm keen to delve into the struggles and challenges of their craft. The first thing I did was primary school where we were doing Dem Bones, Dem Bones, Dem Dry Bones as a little kid, about five years old, and we had to go home and get stockings and get bones painted on ourselves and go. And um, we, we were doing a, a performance at Rickerton High School, for God's sake. Oh, yeah, amazing, I haven't ever performed this for years. Here we go, and, um, it's flooding back. Yeah, yeah, I was, I was at Avonhead Primary, but uh, we went to Rickerton High School to perform, and all I can remember is doing the song, and then halfway through, my stocking ripped on my face. And I can remember thinking, oh no. I look really bad and then I'm going, oh no, I've destroyed it. And I remember also thinking, I'm never going to let that happen on stage again. And I, I think that was the first inkling I ever made that I might have a career on a stage. It wasn't a conscious thing, but I remembered it many years later. I remember uh, intentionally making that idea, so don't do that on stage, it looks bad. But, it's, <laughs> but it stayed with you. It did, yeah. I was brought up on a farm and there was 10 of us guys, we're all boys and girls either end. and. Um, and we made our own fun, and uh, it was great fun. But I knew I was never going to make it as a farmer. I knew somehow I thought, farming is not me. <laughs> I mean, we, that's part of the thing, cleaning out the cow shed, chasing the sheep and, yeah. and all that sort of stuff. I was, I was a fantastic dog. Um, but it wasn't until I, went, until I went to high school and I was, went off to boarding school and suddenly there was a whole new world. And, um, and I saw the Pirates of Penzance, I think it was so Where was the boarding school, sorry? Uh, Gisborne Boys High School. Oh, Gisborne Boy High? Yep, yep. that was my first production, and I thought, Wow, this is amazing. I'd like to have a go at that. And with about a year later, I was in the chorus of the Mikado. It wasn't until I was about 23, 24 that I actually thought what I want to do with my life and, I, and so what, uh, we'll figured uh, it out. Before you made that decision, what, what were you doing? Were you like, oh. uh, after high school, did you do varsity or? No, I, I sort of left high school in a bit of difficulty. Yep, uh, even at that. Was, was, <laughs> was sort of asked to leave uh, and did and, uh, and I sort of bummed around I, I did um, I worked in orchards and I assembled international harvester uh, combine harvesters I assembled tractors what I made surfboards international harvester international trucks I used to build and so forth and so I did a lot of that sort of thing and so and why, was, why, are you, why are you doing that are you, are you in the background are you thinking you know, stage or film or acting, or no, you're just concentrating I'm not on not, anything not about burning that. your hands. In fact, off. I didn't even know that it was possible to be an actor in this country. I did, it was one of those things that was an impossible dream. It wasn't until one day I decided that I, I needed to figure out what I wanted to do, and I locked myself in my bedroom with a piece of paper, saying, "I'm not coming out until I decide." Yeah. You know, because I figured if I could get one thing down, I'd probably be able to work at it and do okay. So I thought the rules for my decision were. Um, only that I wasn't to be, I, I said to myself, you can't be bound by anything, so no matter how mad or fantastic it is, put that down as to what you want to do. And the first thing I thought of was, oh, I want to be an actor. Boom. That's it. And then I went, oh, I want to be an actor. And that was the first time it had edited. No plan B? No, no, no plan B, no, 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 that was what I wanted to do. And then my father had said, oh, well, you're probably going to be a minister or a teacher. Was there a lot of pressure from your father? Not really. No, but he was Not just really. speaking out loud. I for just you. thought, well, you know, <laughs> what else are you going to be? I thought, well, hey, yeah, maybe right, a teacher yeah. or a minister of the church. I remember when we were at boarding school, we had to go to church every Sunday, and I remember looking at the um, this whole procession coming in with all the servers and the crosses and the, all the hoo ha, and I thought, wow, I want to be one of those. So, but then about a year I was, I became head server. You've yeah. never seen anybody so pious in your life. <laughs> I look back and I think, well, it was the theatricality of yeah. it. That's well, what it attracted is. It's me. Just, it's just I thought, and I, I was unaware of it, but it was simmering there. 
I applied for New Zealand Drama School to George Webby, who wrote me a letter, a very nice letter, saying, thank you for your charming letter, Peter. Unfortunately, you're too old. Try your local theatre. And how old were you? 23. You're too old. No, I was too old. Try your local theatre. So I did. I went to the court theatre in Christchurch and sort of worked as an apprentice at the court theatre for the next three years. So. And what, what was their main production line? What, what, what did they specialise in? Oh, we did everything that was, just that was going. Gamut. Absolutely everything from modern plays to Shakespeare to uh, restoration comedy to Akebourne to, you know. Did uh, you have a favourite? That you, like, when it came up on the schedule, you were like, oh, I'm really looking forward to doing that. Yeah, the next play was generally the favourite. Dedicate a bunch of people. Like this Absolutely, is, we're just and going to sacrifice and do it. And yeah, well, you work. You worked at a company of of uh, dedicated individuals who were absolutely passionate about their craft, and as a consequence, you lived, breathed, and and slept theatre. That's all you did. And and um, and as a consequence, I mean, I, I learnt the, the the craft on stage. It's terrifying, but at the same time, it teaches you. If, if it's not right, you, you, don't, you can't just walk away because the audience will tell you. Well, then I went to teacher's training college and a friend said, why don't you study singing? And then my singing teacher said, why don't you look at the auditioning for Paul and Best? Mm -hmm. So I auditioned for that, but didn't get in. Didn't, and so I was on section one day and they rang and said, look, there's, an, there's another role they're going for, sport in life. So I, I said, oh, all right. So I had one dre terrible day at school. I kept kids after school. <laughs> A really ratty day, and I turned up for this audition. I said, I don't care what anybody thinks of my so I sang, and I got into the chorus. I think the hardest thing about painting George is are you painting the actor or are you painting George? Because he's such an experienced actor, sometimes you'll be talking to him and he'll let a character maybe come out a little bit, and I've picked that up. So I have to make sure that when I do the painting, it's a portrait of George and not say the character that he's talking about. A question that I've actually always wanted to ask you, being an actor, playing an intense role, have you ever lost yourself in that role like after filming is finished? Only once, I mean, only, only, only with the stage show, not with, when the filming, actually when, when the production finished at night. Yeah, it was Othello, playing Othello, and that was uh, one of those very, very intense, intense roles. I have been lost lines in a show while I've been doing it. I remember doing a whole one-man show on George Gershwin, and it was so popular, we kept doing it over and over again, so they had an extension week, and I think I was getting a bit too uh, cocky with this, and, and I got to a, a, there was a, I had a, a, the final six o'clock show and an 11 o'clock show. The six o'clock show was, started rattling on about somebody called Harold Kaufman. I thought, Harold, Harold Kaufman? Who knew this Harold Kaufman? I thought, uh-oh, you wandered for a minute, and I got completely lost, and, and I thought, no, just relax, it'll come. And I went, oh, no, I beg your pardon, George Kaufman. So I went on and on. And, at the same time, 11 o'clock performance that night, the final show, it was packed up with all the theatre people and whatever, and I got the same spot in drive and could not think of even George Kaufman. A few years ago, I had a, uh, an accident in, on a beach and was knocked out and uh, got a fairly serious concussion just before an opening night. And I had blackouts for the two previews beforehand. Uh, and I was sitting on stage doing a show called Art, and I was sitting very similar, <laughs> similarly to this. Right. And I just went completely blank. And I went, I don't know who I am, I don't know where I am, I don't know what time it is. Front. All I know is I'm supposed to say something and there's an audience sitting there and I freaked. Oh. And I was about to say, look, um, I wish the floor would open up and yeah, swallow me and disappear. And everybody's very quiet, I could see them. And oh, I could walk down those stairs and leave this theatre, probably never get work ever again. And I thought, oh, no, I know, I'll do one of those theatrical speeches where we say, ladies and gentlemen, there comes a moment in an actor's life where, you know, his memory fails. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I was, but the pianist turned to me and said, um, Harold Calvin? I said, ah, ah, no, George Calvin. And I was back on. And that's it. Boy, that was heart-stopping stuff. <laughs> and I, took, and I, got, I freaked so badly, I couldn't remember how to get back. Uh, to what I to you know just think about what the next line was and look at the boys on stage. I was actually just sitting there, completely bewildered. So I had to call out to the stage manager, Frith, and say line please, which I haven't never done and you can't do in New Zealand theatre. There isn't anyone there generally, but I knew Frith was there and yeah. she fortunately threw me the line, 
and I threw it into the mix and then sort of carried on and that was the preview but the preview had an audience so I thought oh it's all right I'll, I'll, I've, I've had the big screw up it won't happen again yeah. well the second night it happened again same place same sort of thing and I'm going oh my lord and uh, so opening night of course I can't figure anything out I'm no. just but I but I've got a fantastic memory yeah you know well I've, I've had a fantastic memory it's not so great anymore but I'm, and uh, and it was one of the things I prided myself on you know that I was able to recall and you know facts and figures and bits and pieces and and uh, so it was it was frightening to know that something had happened into, into yeah. the brain that the, meant that the uh, capacity for remembrance wasn't there in fact the capacity for remembrance is there but the capacity for fear to overcome it was the first time that it actually did that. Do you know of a role that you haven't played but you're really you're quite desperate to play or have you done it all? I think I've done a huge amount, a huge variety of roles which, is, uh, which has been more satisfying for me is to play all the different, different roles. Now there's, there isn't a role that I sort of hankered after. Yeah, yeah. I just like to see what comes, even roles that I've seen before and I thought, oh, that, that's never appealed to me. Like Frankenfurter. I thought, Frankenfurter, well, it's fine, it's interesting. And then so I got to play it and I went, wow, oh, I can see other possibilities yeah. here. So you, you sort of put, in, put your slant on it. And Once you're out and, you, and the stage is rolling, yeah. you, you get the energy flows through you and the audience feeds you, you feed the audience and something magical occurs between you. It's in a glorious transcendent thing. Yeah. And when a play is flowing... So it's quite physical for you. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. It's physical, mental, spiritual. It's, it's, com it's completely involving. And when, that, when it's working and the, the play is rolling and you're on top of it and you are the focus, the searchlight beam of what happening, hap is happening next, shrinks to where it should be, to about sort of a headlight yeah. torch on the track saying this is next, this is next, this is next. Instead of a searchlight going, what the hell's coming up? <laughs> yeah. uh, if you can get that down to a normal size so that you can distract, then the process becomes joyous and blissful. Yeah. And the audience picks up on that and, and I'm aware that I have to walk on stage and look completely and utterly calm. Like, I'm Stand by everyone, I'm the professional, I know what I'm doing. Yeah, but and most of it's bullshit. Yeah. But, but I know that I have to put that across because if they feel relaxed, if they calm down, if they go, I can trust this guy, then something, it's, it's an intransmutable sort of thing, immutable sort of thing, you yeah. can't find it. But it happens between us. And if there's a trust element that occurs, it just says, look at me, it's all safe. And they go, oh, okay, we're in the hands of somebody who can deal with this. Then we go, okay, it's fine, and something remarkable happens. When I look at Peter, I see a very open face, uh, a face of an open person, and I want, I want the work to reflect that, that there's a softer, honest, accessible quality he has. I'm looking forward to it. George, have you... Dabbled in painting yourself? Yes, very briefly. Yeah. Actually, I, I quite whet my appetite. Uh, it was for a, a school charity thing down in Christchurch. Typical me, I like a challenge. Yeah. So I went off to the gallery and had a good look around. And um, I mean, I've always liked abstract art. And, um, and I started painting this thing. And um, the director of the theatre came down. And he said, "What are you? Do? Oh my goodness! Stop there! Don't go any further." I said, "What? What? What?" He said, "That looks fantastic." I said, "Really?" Oh, okay, fine. Okay, fine. So I parked it there, put a notice beside it saying, please don't touch, the painting's wet. Came in the next day, there's another note sitting right there saying, so sorry, slipped on the mat, cleaner. <laughs> and the mat was miles away, and the painting had been just a big, I think they were trying to wipe out what they did. They must have touched it to see if it was wet. Yeah. And of course made and a big panicked. mess of it. <laughs> and then panicked. And uh, so I thought, oh, now what do I? So I fiddled around, I fixed it all up, and then I turned it around and went fiddle, 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 fiddle. And then I thought, this looks like absolutely nothing on earth. But I love the texture of it. So I turned it again and went, wow. That's it. I don't know what that is. That's it. I'm signing it. So I scratched my name in it and I sent away. And then some guy 
bid seven hundred bucks and was going to go wow. up to a thousand for it, and wanted to know the the uh, the uh, pedigree of the artist and yeah. where he trained. Did he train in France? I said no. It was a it was a collaboration between myself <laughs> and the cleaner. Yes. I think that's that's all I'm going to do on it today. I'm really, I can really see it taking form. So that's us. George, thank you so much for coming in. Thank you. Uh, it's been a real pleasure. We'll get you back in uh, when it's done. Yep. Have you ever actually, have you ever painted? Yeah. And how did that turn out? Or do you, I, I, have you dabbled it in a few times or just done a one-off? I, I paint occasionally at home. And there's a moment when I, when I put paint on canvas when I, it's like, I suppose it's a, it's a role. I just switch into Painter. And I, and now I, I, you know, I'm not a painter. I'm not a trained painter or anything like that. But I, 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 I love the process of doing it. And um, I've even um, given a couple of artworks to some friends of mine. But they're, but I can't paint just because somebody says so. But I can paint for somebody else. I'm really happy with the way it's coming. I've blocked you in. I've got you in position. My composition is sorted out. Thank you so much. It's pretty easy. It's not a hard process. Okay. That's good. Right. So we will get you back in okay. when it's done and we'll do the big, uh, the big grand reveal. All right. Look forward to it. I'd like to try and keep Peter's portrait quite simple. Uh, I think if you ask Peter a question, you're going to get a straight answer. So I'm going to keep the tones uh, quite even right through his face. Generally, the forehead's lighter, the nose is a bit darker, even though it's got a high plane, and then as you get to the, the jawline area, it gets quite dark. But he's got this lovely olive complexion. He's a man that lives outside, I think, and it's just got this nice even tone that goes right through the painting. So I'm going to have to keep quite a limited palette um, ideally, I think I'll probably work with well, one, two, three, four, five, six, no more than six general colours. And I think we're just going to keep it very smooth. And I think that's really going to suit um, Peter's face and, and the expressions that I, that I get from him. George Benamati, if I close my eyes, he's got this real orange, sort of cad orange that goes through his skin and it's quite. It's quite youthful looking, so I think I'll have him smiling. He's, he's got a really good outlook on life, and I think I'll, you know, he'll be looking at something that he finds you know, engaging or not too sure about laughing, because teeth are, uh, shouldn't really put teeth in a portrait, but um, you might give it a go. Yeah, I think we'll put his teeth in. Follow me. Yes. We'll just come and stand here. And if I can just position you just here. All right. I'm going to go back. I'm going to put the painting on the easel. Whatever you do, don't turn around just yet. This is like an opening night. It, very, very similar. <laughs> okay. <sighs> <laughs> I'm going to leave. Yes. And at your own time, you just turn around. Okay. Okay? Right. Good luck. <laughs> oh my goodness. Wow. It's not what I expected at all. That's great. So I was looking at the eyes actually. For a minute there, the eyes there. Didn't realize he got so many teeth. Is that what you think of me, is it? <laughs> that's nice, that's yeah. great, that's great. I mean, I mean you, we, we never really know what we're like. I mean, you, what you see in the mirror, what you see on, on photographs and everything is never what you think you look like. Yeah. And it's interesting to see it through somebody else's yeah. eyes. That's the, yeah. the greatest thing about what I do, yeah. is I can show you yeah. what I see. Yes. And I have that many teeth. Okay, how are you feeling? Uh, a little trepidatious, yeah. 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 Okay. I am. Well, I won't hold you up any longer. Okay. I'm going to go back and put on the easel and I'm going to come back. So just, yeah. just wait here for a second. Okay. 
Oh my God, this is nerve wracking. <laughs> I'm going to walk out. Okay. And in your own time, just turn around. Okay. All right? Yep. <laughs> when you get this close, it's it's there's a sort of um, a watchfulness about it. Really, it's, it's almost a uh, a duality. Like there's a sort of a this. It's a bit foxy because the, the, the mouth is sort of smiling, saying everything's safe, but the eyes are going, what's going on? It's quite clinical. It's... Buddy. All right. That's lovely. Good. Yeah. Um, what I was astonished by is, is that I, I look quite gentle. Were well, you very open? Right. When we had our chat. Yeah. You were very open, you are very forthcoming yeah and at ease even some of the stuff you're talking about is hard mm. you're still at ease talking about it yeah thank you thank you no no, no, no good man <laughs> it's lovely it's good it's a good it's a it's um it's it's not at all what i expected that's the that's the what did you expect? well i don't because you've seen I, some I, of my I, other work yeah and yeah. i expected to be a little harder a little more pushy, you know, and you've also turned my rather bent nose in the right direction, which is extremely flattering. Oh. <laughs> I thought I made it worse. <laughs> oh! Yeah. It's the smile, it's the little smile around there. What is it? It's very you and your eyes, those eyes that are always on the I love it. My teeth? Teeth? All my own. Your teeth are perfect. You do look like you take a decent bite out of a forearm, though. <laughs> <laughs>